How's it going, everybody? Welcome to this week's podcast. This week, we're talking about our forgiveness model and how that relates directly to our case review process and our after action review and how those uh, create accountability as well as create safety and humility within our team. So here we go. Welcome to the podcast. All right, guys, welcome back to another podcast. Uh, quick shout out uh, to Chris Nixich. Uh, he is our self-appointed president of the podcast fan club. Uh, I don't know if there was any elections held for that, but um, if anyone else wants shouts out, just, just let us know. We'll give you a shout out. But uh, He does keep us to our deadlines. He does. Better than anyone. He, he does, yeah. We Way have, better than yeah. either of us. <laughs> Yeah, and that's actually we had to move now the podcast just from an uploading standpoint. We were saying Friday is much easier, and it's like Thursday at like five thirty two. Like Chris is like, "Where is it? Where, you know? Give me the phone call." Yeah, yeah. Kendall actually is another one of uh, our listeners as well. Who she's just like, "Where is it?" And I'm like, "I'm not in charge of uploading." And I'm like, "I don't know." I tell you what, I'm very thankful for Ted and Chris. Yes, because yes. otherwise we'd be really far behind. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, Ted. Ted nails it. Uh, yeah, we've, we've alluded to Ted doing all of our post-production, but um, uh, anyway, so uh, here we go, uh, jumping into forgiveness. Um, yes, the basic, as we've referred to probably in every episode in the last five or six, and how the forgiveness model is the is the base where all of these different tools stand on, mm. um, because really what it comes down to is, is when we go into any uh, discussion with staff or whoever it might be, where uh, account uh, an accountable conversation, mm -hmm. we go into it with the uh, uh, hope of creating forgiveness, right? Yeah, yeah. Not that it's always possible, but we always uh, we always start there because without having that uh, predisposition of creating forgiveness. Um, it's not something that actually naturally breeds itself for the most part, because uh, culturally there's a pretty significant lack of that, uh, just yeah. within uh, with you know across nationwide, I guess you could yeah. say, and, and, and even more so. So we created a very deliberate um, model yeah. model yeah. Uh, that that allows for these conversations to happen. And I think kind of like we said before this, but you know, I think it was the same discussion with forgiveness as it was for accountability is I, I don't think a lot of people know what accountability is or was. Yeah. Hopefully in the last several podcasts, we were able to sort of elaborate upon the different ways in which we define and assign and create accountability. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with forgiveness. Yeah. You know, as most people don't really know what that means universally, I think we each have our own sort of definition of how we want forgiveness to occur. Yeah. Um, but then also as we kind of go through this model and we kind of talk about the rules and barriers and the process of forgiveness, I think the other biggest misconception with forgiveness is that as soon as you forgive someone, you have then absolved them of accountability. Right. And, and so, yeah, you've got that side where it's like, well, we're just moving on. We're not actually addressing this yeah. or getting better. It's like, well, no. Because that's yeah. not how the the uh, you know the the origin of forgiveness actually had nothing to do with with yeah. just moving past things. Yeah. It had every uh, uh, the, the 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 purpose of it was essentially the reset button. Yeah, uh, and, and reestablishing. Yeah. Um, both trust, but also accountability on that side. Yeah, we jokingly said the difference between let's um, get past this and let's get over it. Yeah, yeah, yep. So we're not getting past it. We're not just evading the problem. Yeah. We're getting over the problem with the intention of of ultimately, you know, leaving mm -hmm. it behind us. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, like you said, there's work involved in going over something. Hills do require work. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. But it, going around it where I'm just going to, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just like. It, Meow. The, it's, it's the physics thing where you have to lift it's something just, heavy, right? That's right. work. Yes. yes. Uh, Increasing potential energy. Yes. yes. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, that was a bad joke. Yeah, a bad joke. Uh, I mean, we are both dads, so I think we're allowed to have, yes. like, we can interject dad jokes mm -hmm. into things, especially if they're, like, nerdy physics dad jokes. Mm -hmm. I feel like that hits on a different level. I, I, it hits all <laughs> the levels for me, so, and I'm really just in this for myself. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So, uh, the other thing, too, that this does is what it, 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 it creates a structure to get over what our problems are in an effective manner. Yeah. But it also uh, has taken something that, uh, uh, people that, that I've known in my life 
that really believe in the the idea of forgiveness is that it's a feeling, not even not so much a process. And what we did is, if that's what it is, we did turn it into a process, at least to yeah. create that uh, that even in a, just an emotional response that's yeah. positive yeah. out of something that's potentially negative. Yeah, I, I personally, I think the more you become adept at forgiveness, you actually have less emotion regarding conflict. Like overall, mm-hmm. um, you we you kind of made the joke earlier um, because as we kind of get into the different types of forgiveness, um, you said I'm uh, particularly good at uh, the release type mm-hmm. of forgiveness and it's yeah it's just that it's like as you start to become more and more familiar with sort of releasing the emotion from these things i just think in general you're happier but more importantly it's just you don't it's like don't sweat the small stuff yeah you know even even then when big stuff is really big stuff it mm-hmm. sort of becomes small stuff because you're like well that's not really going to affect me right um at least on a, like a base emotional level um and i think um kind of as you had pointed out when we start to talk about forgiveness being like the base of all accountability it gets back to our industry overview um you know saying that this really does hit on a lot of different parts a lot of different yeah, pieces for sure so to start off uh in in kind of determining you know why are we talking about this what is what is the purpose of potentially integrating this model into your setting and it's really uh, a a direct mechanism to release anger and spite, eliminate the potential for resentment, um, and uh, reopen and then maintain the access to accountability. And the reason I say that is because when you have anger between uh, two people or you have spite or resentment, uh, the the, uh, the accountable conversations become extremely difficult because yeah. it breeds drama. Yeah. So if, I, if I'm holding on to something that you did three months ago and now we're talking about something that you did two days ago, right. and all I'm thinking about is the thing that you screwed up three months ago and how it's slightly related to this thing and now I really just like you twice as much less yeah um, you're gonna ultimately and it's, and it's reasonable feel attacked yeah yeah because no longer are we just problem solving it's like yeah. well you're just holding on to shit yeah uh, you're yeah. Uh, so so and self victimizing mm-hmm. is kind of you know yeah I, I or think, even or even persecuting sure it can go yeah. both ways yeah absolutely yeah, and I think like you, you know, had kind of said in that is what we're not saying is, and, and let's be very, very clear about this, is that you can have a someone who makes a mistake or has a problem three months ago and two days ago, and you are allowed to react to what happened three months ago and two days ago, but the reaction is from a point of accountability. Mm-hmm. It's not from a position of uh, emotion and spite, right. which is then breeding victimization, persecution, and low levels of accountability. Um, and that was uh, one, of the, one of the examples we had um, where <laughs> actually we had sort of laughed off uh, one of the mistakes that you had made um, was the, the one thing that we had identified was the the weight mm-hmm. is that if you're waiting on some of these things as the person who was negatively impacted by it and saying, well, this happened three months ago, we never really established a foundation for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, and now something happened two days ago. It's like you actually, even though this employee had wronged you, you were the unaccountable one because you waited right. that amount of time for it to come up and to release the emotion. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say arguably the emotional release that would have happened three months ago to two days ago, it's a higher emotional release two days ago because you waited three months to have it. Mm-hmm. It's only worse with time. Yeah. Um, and that's, and that's again, what we're saying is that we're not absolving the accountable part is that it's purely the emotional component that sticks with it. And it's that right. spite and um, anger and, you know, mm-hmm. overall what we're saying is a lack of forgiveness. Right. The way that that, uh, that process was described to me when I was working on building this model is uh, that, that, that feeling of resentment and just holding on to stuff, bottling it up and all that is, is a, uh, similar to the way that lava reacts. So when you when it when you take it when it's when it is present, you know, it's very fluid and you can you can actually manipulate it in mm-hmm. in a in a decent way and, and be able to, you know, it's yeah. obviously extremely hot. Yeah, it's very hot. Yeah. But when it hardens, it's a it's really, really difficult to manage. Sure. So when you when you bottle all that stuff up at you know, it it you can pour it out and just let it go. But yeah. if you wait, 
it's going to harden yeah. and then you have to chip away at it and that hurts yeah just to break those uh ten you know just to break that out of of your of your consciousness and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff so especially if it hits water and turns into obsidian then it's sharp yes <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then it, there. Then it continues to cut every time you try to chip away at it. Dad science joke yeah. number two number of the two podcast. For the podcast. I Dad love joke. it. Yep. We're going to max yeah. out on this. Yeah, we're doing <laughs> <laughs> geology. Yes, geology. We just had a geology joke. Yeah, Sorry, mm-hmm. everyone. Whoo-wee. Yeah. So, uh, but you did say, too, that this does combat, combat uh, a lot of our core issues that we have on our our industry overview. So we understand the purpose and now we're starting to look at, because again, these, these large problems impact people in different ways, but ultimately, you know, it all works together together, in a bad way. In a bad way. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, within our industry, yeah, if you guys jump back to the industry overview PDF. When we, when we talk about integrating this forgiveness model and how it directly combats these problems, it's like, yeah, you're going to do it on an individual level, mm-hmm. um, but you're going you're gonna to hit on some of these bigger ones and create change on a micro level that yeah. ultimately, we hope, creates change on a macro level yeah. over time. Yeah, yeah, and that's the idea of fix yourself. When you fix yourself, you fix the team, you fix the team, you fix the clinic. Exactly. You fix the, you know, so as you just keep branching out from there the more times um, exactly. and, it, and it just seems so crazy that a something in as simple as forgiveness actually does fix so many different problems that's why we're ending with it but mm-hmm. um, all of it is basically hinges upon this so the the two big categories and as as it uh, is sorted on our industry overview that it uh, touches on it, it literally touches on is culture and uh, talent yep so yep. the 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 big one uh, to me is is that loss of self-worth yep and the the idea that uh, you know is we've, we've we've had you know shared stories about you know when you were in school and how there's a yeah. general lack of a forgiving nature Absolutely. or just in clinic there can be in 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 different different respects but really what it comes down to is we we have a an industry of people that have a la- lack of self or loss of self-worth which creates doubt and creates a uh, um, overall a, a lack of an ability or skill set yeah. to forgive oneself oh yeah so if yeah. i'm not worth a lot i'm going to continue to berate myself yeah and just say you suck you suck yeah. you yeah. suck most and likely then, more than anyone else would but it's mm-hmm. just like yeah constant yeah it's just self-degradation right and and as we've I, I mean, I've done that to myself. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, you yeah. have too, and yeah. I'm sure a lot of people that are listening to this have because our inner voice is a just an asshole. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. is that when yeah. when we don't have a structure outside of ourselves that is forgiving, yeah. all it does is perpetuates that lack of yeah. loss of self worth. Yeah. However, when somebody puts the faith in us and yeah. says, "I I will forgive you for that," yeah. That's like we're going to get over this. Yeah, yeah. Um, to take a little work, but we it, it will. will take work. Yeah, uh, but we're gonna get to the uh, to the implementing of of a solution on this specific problem so that we can you know leave this in the past. It's not going to be an instant change in the way that your mind works, no. and you're not going to automatically be like, "Man, I'm the best thing in the world." Yeah. But over time, as you continue to circle around that, yeah. um, the self worth as because other people have worth in you, yep. self worth then comes up. The skill set of forgiving oneself becomes better, and also it kind of takes away from the hierarchy that would uh, naturally exist because you're just talking person to person. Yeah, there's no, yeah. I'm your boss. I'm gonna forgive you, but right. As soon as the word "but" comes in, yeah, uh, it, it 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 kind of completely eliminates yeah right. <laughs> the purpose right uh, yeah so yeah but yeah that's that's yeah like you said the the self worth component I mean I think for me in general um, like I exude self worth like for me I value myself so high I know that's funny to say but part of it is is that as you start to tell that part of your head to shut up, you know, and saying like, no, I'm not worth anything. I've had 
definitely plenty of opportunity in my life where mm-hmm. people have, you know, told me I'm worth nothing or, um, you know, would have otherwise attempted to make me feel like I'm worth nothing. It comes back to just like, well, I'm not even sure I respect you enough to allow you to touch my self-worth. Yeah. Um, but what we're saying is that it took time to build up to that. And it's basically we are, what we're, what we are trying to do from an administrative standpoint is create an environment where you can, in your head, start to quiet that little piece because we are investing that forgiveness. And as we get through this, you'll see that part of the forgiver is like the forgiver is making the sacrifice to the offender. Um, but like you said, as that starts to happen, we're just saying in the workplace, we are now really pushing hard to increase self-worth because failures aren't met with like i am a failure there's right. failures but just right. because there's failures it doesn't mean you are a right. failure and that that's i think where a lot of people start to get mixed up and that's kind of the confusing part that i think a lot of people when you talk about having a safe environment sure. that's yeah. the big mix up is yeah. it, uh we're not saying in any instance that you are a failure yeah. you just missed the mark here yep yeah. Uh, and, and the cool part about the isolated, uh, you know, the, the focus on that is even if you have somebody that is a perpetual problem creator, yeah. you can, you can, you can attack them individually. Yeah. And ultimately if, if you can, if you don't have the resources, time probably being the cr- most critical time, one yeah. there to continue to go down that path, mm-hmm. you can at least say, we did everything that we could yeah. and we've now started to understand that you have some barriers here that yeah. just are just greatly impeding your potential for success within this environment. Yeah. And, uh, and it even, even personally, you know, I think that's the other thing too, like what we found when we have uh, employees leave the organization or anything else, like, you know, this kind of gets into one of the types of forgiveness on the release side. It's just mm-hmm. like, okay, you're going to go away and you're right. going to continue to be this person. And I think that's where I think if I, if I am impacted by an employee leaving that capacity, I actually feel kind of bad, mm-hmm. you know, because you can tell that it, in some circumstances between a deterioration or, uh, you know, a lack of advancement in their skill set, um, you know, to kind of the idea of overall self-worth. It's like, man, you know, we really had the opportunity to make an impact there. But like you said, there was a barrier. Mm-hmm. There was just, you, we couldn't get past this part. And that's kind of where, you know, we kind of make a joke. Like, we're not really here to be therapists. Right. Um, you know, we're here to kind of create this positive environment. Um, and uh, actually just at our staff meeting the other day, um, I had one of our new hires. Um, approach me. We're kind of talking about a few other things, um, but you know, like you said, we talked about the safe environment, not not a safe space, but a mm-hmm. safe environment. Um, is that's what we say all the time? Is just check your shit at the door. Yeah, you know, and that's on so many different levels. You know, like we were saying between you know health of the family or finances or all these different types of things. It's like just check it when you're coming in here. This environment is somewhere that you should look forward to coming in, mm-hmm. and part of that in that safe and the humility and being humble and you know uh, vulnerable and all you know those other different kind of pieces. Um, again, still rooted in forgiveness where it's like you're not just going to get owned when something happens right. it's you know yeah let's start to figure out a way when there is a mistake let's figure out a way to increase your skill set and like you had said forgiveness and accountability is a skill set in of itself mm-hmm. um, and that's where I think when people don't understand how to define assign and create accountability and ultimately don't know how to forgive this is a skill just it like anything is. else mm-hmm. yeah yeah above and beyond um, you know technical skill and veterinary skill is it's it's sort of the other half of what our job is in paw health it's the cultural job right so like the, the kind of where we see the most success on this would just be within our leadership team yeah so sure. we've but we've had years yeah. of experience and kind <laughs> of, of working failures. with uh, <laughs> of, yeah I mean caregiver resources yeah. how long did that take <laughs> yeah. uh, right and, and yeah. the funny part is like I bring that up as an example and for those of you that have no idea yeah. because this yeah. was a conversation yeah. amongst five people right is that uh, on pawhealth.net, uh, we have uh, pr- like 100 plus. 35. Yeah. Or something. yeah, yeah. Uh, caregiver resources, which are one page synopses of different uh, diagnoses, uh, where they come from, and you know potential treatment plans. Yeah, just yeah, basically a one page just client handout. It's a resource quick for consume. quick consumption, quick consumption for caregivers. So uh, utilizing multiple resources, Carlo was the point person on this. <laughs> and I believe the original deadline was like March 1st. 
And it ended up being January 1st of the next year. Yeah, March 1st, 2018 yeah. turned into January 1st of 2019. Or yeah. Was it, yeah. So it got pushed out and pushed out and pushed out. And then it, then we got past the 4th of July. And then we're like, well, this clearly isn't <laughs> happening this year. So let's just make it January 1st. <laughs> yeah. And in that, like, if we didn't have a team that was forgiving. Yeah. You'd be like, man, you suck. Yeah. You like, just why keep did you? Missing why, deadline. Yeah. Just get it done. Like, yeah. what? What is wrong with you? Right. You know, kind of. You know, as we look at our problems, right. like, we're, th- that's that is a situation that without forgiveness, you know, we're gonna be less unified as a team because right. I'm gonna now look kind of down on you from a hierarchical structure because you suck. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm disparaging you, yeah. telling you that yeah. you're not very good, yeah. and if you weren't strong of mind, right loss of self-worth like yeah. man i really do suck yeah like, i can't terrible. get i can't get this done yeah. uh and in that setting and and this has happened you know i've missed deadlines yeah. katie's missed deadlines yeah. annie's missed deadlines we we all have um i don't actually think that we've ever used the word forgiveness in our meetings because there's just it, it, we don't number one we haven't had to yeah because we have an understanding amongst everybody that if it continues to be a problem that we understand like we know that there is the solution is not in front of us we just adjust yeah and in that adjustment phase it's the forgiveness of yes we're going to move you know we're going to get over this by delegating exactly yeah pretty much (laughs) yeah um yeah because it's yeah we're we're still being like yeah from a leadership team standpoint we maintain a high level of accountability at all times yeah so the forgiveness is there as a foundation and that's why we keep saying like you know forgiveness is something you can end with we've created a process we've created Mm -hmm. this system of how you actually establish forgiveness but as you start to go through these and as you start to have a forgiving team and a forgivable team Mm -hmm. that's where it becomes less and less and less necessary to even utilize it but for us it's like you said it's like we just already have a high level of accountability we already we don't really care about any of the excuses or blame or reasons mm-hmm. why it's just the adjustment right and in that time and saying i'm like oh my god i can't get this done it then turned into um not not okay well you keep missing deadline you're worthless it's you keep missing deadline who can we delegate parts of this to to assist you right is there someone on the team who can do it and we had um they have several different employees mm-hmm. i mean um, mm-hmm. even up to that point we had several different employees um yeah. who were working on it. veterinary students as well a couple from uh, michigan state and uh, brianna she's working on some or had at that time and is now mm-hmm. continuing to work on some so it's still all the same thing you just make the adjustment so that happens at the leadership team level caregiver right. resources are one example of that yeah. but then now we're saying to bleed down into right. kind of a more like tangible setting well and the reason that i bring it up is if you have uh at the top you know at the the top over whatever yeah, of yeah. your organization if you want to call it that yeah. um if you have a, a team that's able to do that that doesn't necessarily mean that your whole company has that uh, no. on deck no because no. it's it can be very difficult to maintain that same mindset moving forward because i know that the yeah. four of us have struggled with that yeah. on numerous occasions in working with uh staff yeah because mm-hmm. you just kind of you know, you we go from our team where it's it's the mutual thing, and yep. we've and we've learned it from each other, and then we have somebody that's uh, on a on a staff level that doesn't. You know, we don't have that mutual understanding, yeah. and it kind of makes you want to gouge your eyes out a little bit. <laughs> uh, and it and it's not because and this is kind of one of those no blame or yeah. no uh, no no fault situations. Sure, sure, sure. It's not our fault that we brought somebody on that we didn't really you know we didn't have that innate skill set and it's not their problem that they didn't have that skill set either this has to be trained we have to build the base on with each individual to continue to create a high quality culture uh, on on our team yeah and let's let's even work that back so like we say when mistakes are made you're just in your head and i'm worthless and all this you know so when you have someone who does have kind of like at their core you can tell they have a pretty low level of self-worth is that when they don't have forgiveness in themselves and mm-hmm. it's like, yes, we say we as administrators are going to institute forgiveness so you can see what that feels like so you can begin to forgive yourself. If you have a lack of forgiveness, lack of self-worth, 
in an employee who is also very unaccountable, they mm -hmm. become very reactive to feedback yeah. to where it's like, you know, I, I, you made, you made this mistake. Um, you know, is that, uh, you know, we're, we're looking for this type of a solution, this type of a correction. It's like, well, you, you know, and that then comes back to our defining accountability diagram where it's like that person is not living in reality. They're not willing to own these problems. So again, forgiveness coming back to some of the other uh, accountability diagrams we have, but that becomes incredibly volatile. Yeah. Um, where they don't forgive themselves, they're in their head, I'm already not anything, you have this one little, uh, you need to, you know, as a recommendation, you need to make this adjustment, it's just like, yeah, you know, it happens. I think that is very common um, mm. in <laughs> our workplace in particular, well, not our job, but I mean our, yes. our profession in yes, general. Yes, yes. In that, uh, yeah, I will say from experience, that is a very prevalent issue. <laughs> <laughs> because pieces, uh, I, yeah. I can think of a time where I had a, I was in a leadership team, meet, leadership team meeting with a, another business, and uh, they they had one team member that you could tell just was just being super quiet and just didn't feel like it, they wanted to be there at all, sure, and yeah. just, just it, emotion can it. be tangible, yeah. sort of, yeah. and it was just, they were just being the sourpuss about it. Sure, sure. And we brought it up. And how like they they were not they, they they were holding on to some level of resentment from somewhere yeah and they went off <laughs> yes I mean it just <laughs> yeah probably like and this is like a middle aged man too sure yeah yeah like thirty five minutes of just boom Explosion. boom boom just yeah. shots fired yeah, shut, yeah they got it all out yeah, yeah. and uh, at that point I was like hey thanks. Right. I'm glad you got it all out. Right. Because now we can move forward. Right. Now we can get over yeah. all of these problems that you've yeah. now put out there because you holding on to all of that was yeah. completely detrimental. Yeah. yeah. And he turned into one of the most productive members of the team <laughs> yep. after. I mean, there was some significant coaxing. Of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah and and, yeah. and a lot of training that went into that. But the idea behind all of that is he didn't have the skill set. He didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. He didn't really have a whole lot. I shouldn't say that he had some self-worth, but it was misplaced. Yeah. And when these conversations, uh, started to happen, like, you know, his doubts would come out. We're like, I, and he, he was super defensive about him. And then oh, was absolutely. Like, oh, no, no, I don't have to be defensive anymore. Right. Right. Uh, and I can also forgive other people when they have their deficiencies mm -hmm. also, and once he started to shift his mindset towards, instead of like just looking at how everything is awful, looking backwards and all the mistakes that have happened and shifting that towards, let's move forward and how can we continue to get better? Mm -hmm. He like literally became one of the most productive members I of the team. And then that's what we strive to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. And it, it can get a little exhausting. Yeah, It's, it's tough to maintain that mindset, yeah. but it, it, oh man, it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, and I have to laugh too, because, you know, um, a lot of the times I'll hear like, Oh, you work in a profession of all women. That might be, you know, that must mm -hmm. be. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, honestly, s most of the guys I've come across are worse. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and some of it is you have ones that are just very reactive. Um, but it's, it's the bottle up, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like, I, I actually, in some capacity, I do prefer when, uh, whether it be male or female, where it's like, just get it out. Now, again, if there's a 30 minute rant and we found like two problems and all of that, it eh, probably could have dialed it back a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, again, gender independent. Um, but I think when we start to say, um, when we, and now, you know, kind of getting the forgiveness where, you know, we, we've gone through a case review, we've gone through an after action review, most, and again, forgiveness can come from both, but in, in the circumstance that it's kind of between multiple individuals, we go through an after action review. It's kind of like you had said before, it's the creation of post-its. Yeah. So when there's a problem and you root cause something mm -hmm. and you kind of eventually get down, you know, to what the problems actually are, it's like, okay, who's grabbing this post it, yep. you know? Um, yep. and that's where, um, uh, guys, again, as we get through, um, again, our, our, our uh, culture and core values, page eight for forgiveness, you know, we kind of focus on exoneration. I don't want to jump ahead, yeah. but you know, we focus on exoneration where it's just like, this is my post it. This is my problem. I'm owning this, uh, coming back to defining accountability ladder. I'm owning this. Let's sort of 
move on to what that solution is. Um, and I think that's when we say that, you know, the, the foundation of forgiveness, um, you know, we kind of said earlier between sort of defining account, uh, I'm sorry, defining and assigning accountability, that's how you kind of get from the lower levels of excuse and waiting and you get up to that reality and owning it. All we're really saying is, is that the forgiveness model is how we jump from owning it to solutions, right. you know, and then coming in overall to implementation, um, you know, and again, this kind of re- takes the emotional component out of it. Yeah. Um, because again, um, and I think this is probably a good time, of course, to jump in as kind of the rules and barriers. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, when we kind of talk about the barriers of forgiveness is that if there's a lot of these residual things, you can never really actually get to full implementation. You may have a solution, but as far as like the on the individual basis of implementation, if we're still holding on to these old feelings, you didn't actually get over it. Right. You know, so right. you didn't actually really implement this solution very well. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so that's where for us, like on the leadership side where we're just like, yeah, okay, made a mistake. What's the solution? How are we going to implement it? Like, I I honestly, obviously I want people to own things, but Mm -hmm. much below own it. I don't really care. I I don't really need excuses or anything. I just don't care. You know, it's just a waste of time. It's Mm -hmm. like, just forgive it. Let's work to get over it and let's get to the implementation and move on to the next thing. Right. Now, when you have a, the, the under part of your team that wants to hold on to the stuff that, uh, uh, they, they want to hold on to excuses and blaming, uh, and you don't have, or you, you haven't gone through this process yet. What this does is it opens the door to limiting excuses and limiting blaming because if you're going to forgive me, I don't need to make an excuse. I don't need to blame somebody else for the problem that I am uh, ultimately or that that I would hope that that individual would own yeah. because as soon as you own it, you jump into the forgiveness model. Yeah. Like that's the end that's, that jumps into rule number one is that you have to completely submit to the idea of forgiveness for this yeah. to function properly. So yep. putting it out word, there properly. Yes. yes. <laughs> Operative word properly. Yes. Because there's also the passive aggressive forgiveness, yes. which I'm sure that we've all been through. That's the get get around it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're they're just going to get it. past yeah. this, but we're actually not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. We're not getting over it. We're just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. 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 And, and, and it, that, that to me is like, those two words are probably one of the most uh, telltale signs. Uh, you do you, you do you, <laughs> you yes. do you is getting or agree past, to disagree, agree to disagree. Yes. You do you that's get past it, but not actually get over it. Right. Yeah. And that is a, is a telltale sign of something that you're not actually solving. No. You're just and and there are times where it's like, table that yeah i don't have the available resources to deal with that as it stands right now but it it, it, or it's a lower priority based on what i have going on you know we live in a triage world so sometimes that happens yeah um yeah Yeah, the yeah so i guess the ways and it's not done properly as you do you Mm -hmm. um well we just said the uh um a uh, few minutes ago, mine, uh, my reality. Oh, my truth. My truth. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. You do. You. My truth uh, is th- these are all, th- you know, ways in which we're not actually going to be able to do this properly. You have to submit completely. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, your, what does your buddy say about my truth? Oh, so basically, <laughs> the idea is if if the, if you have an impasse at what you believe the truth is, one of the two people is exercising self deception. Uh, sh- yes. Yes. Because. Yeah. Yeah. ultimately and yeah. my and, truth is I'm decepting myself yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for for whatever sake that might be but on yeah. most of the time in my experience it is a self-defense mechanism yeah but that can be bred out of a very unaccountable or unforgiving yes. culture too it's, yeah it's yeah a two-sided yeah. thing yeah yeah um, and, and I understand where it comes from and that's why it, for me and this is the the give trust side of me and and yeah. I and I and I you know, sometimes I feel like I'm on an island in in that world because I was just like, I'm just going to trust this person. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out there. And if yeah. I get burned, yeah. I'll move on to the next one. Yeah. Like, like yeah. what do I have to lose? Yeah. So when I, when I see somebody that has a potential to live th- their truth or something like that, like... Uh, Jen, it yeah. put it put it great. She's, but I'm gonna love you anyway. Yes, and I'm just gonna put it out there. Right. I'm just yes. gonna I'm just gonna give. I'm gonna be gr- uh, gracious with yeah. with this model, and I'm gonna do my absolute best to yeah. forgive you on these things, so mm-hmm. that you can come to reality. Yes, and we can start to own these issues. If I just hold that over your head and how I think you're a terrible person, right. and you just never see the reality. Yeah. Well, now I'm just going to hold on to it harder. Right. Um, I'm yeah. going to, and even if I am 
a lot of times it's an unintentional self-deception. Um, I'm never going to get past that because I'm going to feel like I have to hold on to it because now I'm being attacked. Yeah. Now I'm being persecuted and I, I don't even realize that I'm playing mm -hmm. a victim. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, the full submission to this idea is, is buy into the fact that we're both going to come to a reality that we agree upon mm -hmm. and own our individual parts for exoneration. Now, yeah. when I say exoneration, that's one of the three types yeah. of forgiveness. We only put exoneration on here because this is the one that we strive towards because yeah. the other two are, they tend to get very nuanced or difficult yeah. and also misused. Yeah. So exoneration is... So we're talking about three types of forgiveness. Yes. Yes. There is a, a pretty good video about this uh, uh, that I actually, uh, it's by PragerU. So uh, I know that's a pretty politically... Uh, strong organization. So if you're a liberal individual, I understand that you might not want to watch that. Um, but he does make a good point in there about the three types. And exoneration is the one where we, we isolate a variable. Yeah. And then it, one individual holds that variable. This is the type of problem solving that we strive towards yeah. every single day and yeah. saying this part of the problem or the entire problem itself is yeah. I am owning it. Yeah. This was my fault. Yeah. I'm requesting forgiveness uh, from that. from everyone that it had impacted. Yeah. So, uh, and again, that's what you kind of alluded to it already in that, I'm actually pretty much just going to jump through it here, yeah. in that uh, if, so, if somebody fully owns something yeah. and we've all agreed that that's the full heart of the problem and they're owning the full thing, if the group doesn't forgive them, that's toxic as hell. Yeah. Like that, that is a major detriment. Yeah. So the, the expectation is that, yes, absolutely, we're going to forgive you. Uh, and now we're, what that is, is, is the first step up the hill. Yeah. Now, how to are we going to get over, over this? Yes. How do we get to it? Now we, we've agreed upon reality and it's been owned. Yeah. We're already at number six. It, right. Uh, yeah. Now, the ladder. what is the solution? Mm hmm. And the other side of solution in, 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 in and implementation, they're uh, kind of simultaneous in this respect, is what happens when those aren't implemented? What are the what's the accountable measure when it's not implemented? Uh, because we are now acknowledging through a specific planning mechanism yep. who's responsible for these solutions. Yeah, whether it be and, case review or after action. Yes, yep. and then when that individual doesn't do these things, yeah. what happens then? Setting the leash, as I kind of yeah. commonly refer to it. Now, again, it, it, this doesn't have to be non-secular or, or in a Christian basis, but this is where I learned it. Yeah, yeah. And the reason that I bring that up is because the the origin of this and when I was building it is the the Christian mindset of forgiveness is very, very straightforward because it's written right in the yeah, book. Right, the wages right, right. of sin is death. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Sure. Now, from a, from a, you don't have to believe yeah, that. No, it's uh, entirely yeah. on you. Yeah. Because the way that it works person to person is the wages of you not doing this are this. Yes. We just have that conversation, and that's the resetting of accountability. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it, and I think that's coming into kind of the second rule of forgiveness, you know, is saying that, you know, ultimately when you have the offender and mm -hmm. you have then the forgiver, yeah. right, is that I think that's what most people don't have the expectation of. They yes. think, oh, this person is the offender. They're the one who's going to be doing most of the work here because they're the offender. Mm -hmm. You actually being the forgiver, you being the individual, or you being the group, um, it's actually the forgiver who sacrifices most right. because it affected them. But it's it's if the forgiver doesn't actually make that sacrifice um, to, to, to have that, I mean, then you can really not actually continue to move forward. That's why it's the second rule of mm -hmm. forgiveness. You know, mm -hmm. The first one is everyone has to submit to forgiveness. Rule number two is if you are the forgiver, yeah, you have to get over it. Yes. Like that that's what it is. Now, again, we're not talking about getting over accountability. We're right. talking about getting over sort of that emotional component, that, you know, sort of uh, the release of anger and spite. So we're so we're not um, you know, continuing to have these issues as they move forward. Yeah, the specific wording that I really, really enjoy that's in here is the desire for vengeance. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, it's uh, oh, yeah. in the italics <laughs> yes, it is. there. Yeah. And it because ooh, like like yeah, like you take it to the extreme, right? Right. Yeah. Like, uh, the, you know, the, the individual that, you know, were to murder a family member, right? Like yeah. all I would want to do is go out and murder that person. Oh, that's, that's what a I would desire, do, Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> desire for vengeance. Correct. Right. Yeah. Uh, and we, yeah, and we all, anarchy or 
it turns into this person wronged me. Now my desire for vengeance is going to turn into extremely passive aggressive behavior. Sure. Like I'm just going to be around you, but I'm going to be snide and yeah. I'm going to talk shit behind your back all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. And and you can do that in a multiple uh, different yeah. types of ways. Yeah. And I, I think, it, and that's a totally interrupt, but I do think it's funny that when it's this desire for vengeance, I mean, really at the end is it's sort of this it's desire for vengeance, but it's like, you know, it's you're waiting for them to sort of like do it again, right? So right. that you can be validated. So yes. you're like, see, yes. they did it again and I was right the whole time. Yeah. It's like, no, we just went through this entire after action review or this case review and saying, no, we've actually identified that they are the one who's holding the post-it that is this problem. They're, and they're already saying, I'm the one who's owning this. What else do you want? Right. What else do you want? They're already owning the problem. They're, they're just, this is going to get you over it. Don't continue to hold on to it because you're not going to get any further than them holding on to the problem and saying, I owned it. Right. You know, what else do you want? Yep. Get over it. Yep, absolutely. So it's so just, just this is the part that is, and this was Katie's biggest struggle with it, yeah, right? Yeah. Is like, okay, I want to forgive people, but I also need accountability. Yeah. I, right. I absolutely need it. And the only way I know how to do it <laughs> is to hold things over people's heads. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and I, I acknowledge it's this. a tool. It, it, it is a tool. I would say that it's trying to use a Phillips head screwdriver in a flathead spot. <laughs> right. It feels like you're yeah. holding the right handle, but yeah. as you try to spin it, it just doesn't work. Yeah. And it, it, that's why we push so hard on yeah. the accountability stuff first and just understanding that this process is the basis of it yeah. because really what you're striving towards is creating new measures of accountability yeah. and ultimately implementing yeah. solutions. Which is number three in the rules of forgiveness yes. is that what you're moving towards is both, both parties must be willing to effectively communicate on an ongoing and regular basis. Yes. So it's not, you know, it's not just that we both have to submit to the model. Yep. We're going to have forgiveness. The forgiver is going to have to give something up, mm -hmm. right? They have to have this release, but it's like, and also BTW, y'all got to continue to talk to one another right. effectively, yeah. not passively. Yes. You know, that's, that is then ultimately the third part this is not just i forgive you it's like okay <laughs> you know but i love you anyway yes. keep talking to each other it'll get better with time and the and the other part about that too is a, when you implement this there's going to be residual stuff that you didn't even realize sure there's going to be things yeah. that people are going to do that are going to as you start to understand the emotional reactions that you're having yeah there's going to be like oh i didn't realize that was actually pissing me off so bad yeah like yeah. I need to I need to let that go. Yeah, yeah. I need to get that out and, and yeah. then you have the conversation because the cool part about when that happens is our specific processes in the case review and the after action review talk about the individual isolated event, yeah. not necessarily about all of the other crap that happened. Yeah. Because when we practice the letting go and the getting over of one that specific piece, yeah. the other stuff tends to fall away with yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and so I think we talked about this precast was essentially that degree of forgiveness and just mm -hmm. saying like, you know, for me, it's just once once you get to that level of forgiveness, and it's just you're e it's easier to let stuff go. It doesn't pollute you other ways, right? Um, and one of the conversations I had um, with a different employee earlier earlier in the week, maybe it was last week, um, was exactly when we like onboard new employees. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you don't actually realize all the different things this lack of forgiveness touches because it's oh, this new hired employee I had issues with this person was unaccountable repeatedly. Mm -hmm. We could not train this individual as an employee. Look at how much time I put into this individual and then that person's gone. Right. Well, now I don't have the ability to have that person actually, you know, f to allow forgiveness to occur. So when the next new employee comes in it's and they start to have some similar trending behaviors of the past employee, it's now all the other shit from yep. the lack of forgiveness there is now put onto this new employee. With a new employee, like, they made, like, one little mistake. It's like, oh, my God. Like, why, <laughs> why are you treating me this way? I feel like, attacked. I just, yeah, I just fucking got here, you know? You know, and, and I think some of that is um, we had alluded to it back when we were assigning accountability um, during that podcast and saying there are actual times where people are actually victims. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yep. And that's this circumstance that we're referring to is that if you are an employee who has overall a lack of forgiveness and that you kind of hold on to these things and it starts to pollute who you are and your interactions with other people, that's when you act, you actually do start to victimize people. Yeah. You're such a staunch persecutor that they can't get ahead right. or they, you know, this person makes one mistake and you're fucking trash, right. you know, like you, I, you know what, you're just, I, you, I have written you off, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, but a, where that comes from from is a lot of bottled up emotion from other interactions with other people from where you weren't actually ab able to establish a level of forgiveness which dictated your ability to actually sacrifice in forgiving those people is now starting to negatively impact your interactions with new people right you know it's my favorite example of that and a lot of people will be re able to relate to this millennial blaming uh <laughs> Sure. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So I had a, sh I as individual, as as a, a the proverbial individual or whatever, I had one to multiple crap experiences with millennial, a millennial person. Sure. Like this individual was la just an awful employee. Like right, I, right. Th those people exist. Yep. I'm not one of those as I'm raising my hand. Right. Um, <laughs> wow. That was, am I, am I subconsciously yeah, right. killing myself? Right. Uh, but I had a bad experience with this individual and now I hate the whole generation. I'm yeah, resentful right. towards this age group. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Those damn kids. Those damn kids. Get <laughs> off my lawn, right? <laughs> and that's it. But that's to me. That's uh, holding on. And, and in this specific scenario, right? I'm that individual is being resentful towards the idea of new hire, uh, not so much resentful towards the individual that right. is coming on. Yes, it's just it's the position man, of new hire that I'm resentful and towards. And because I never got to get that vengeance out, <laughs> I never got to give that person a piece of my mind <laughs> right. and let that go. Yeah. Uh, or, or get over it. Yeah. And we can talk about the other type of, uh, one of the other two types of forgiveness being release yes. is what really what we're aiming for yes. in that instance. Yes. Yeah, when you don't have the ability to have exoneration, uh, the other one's release. Right. So that's where it gets really, uh, I, I love that example because it's all it is. It's it, yeah. Because what does that turn into? Emotional reactions to yeah. people you don't even know. Right. Like you see one, uh, if, if you see me, on my phone, right. maybe more than you would expect. Right. Like, well, not more than me. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I, whatever, Carlo. You don't even know what Instagram is. Yeah, well, I learned. I learned. <laughs> if I'm on TikTok, yeah, <laughs> sure. And you're like, man, what? Like, I just, I, I just don't like you because yeah. you're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Isn't do that you not fine? like me, or do you not like millennials? Like, what are you holding on to? What yeah. are you kind of being unaccountable towards too? Yeah. And understanding your own behaviors. Yeah. So that's absolutely uh, when you talk about communication effectively and on an yeah. ongoing and regular basis that's one-to-one -one communication with a yeah. person so if i'm on my phone and you believe that i'm out of line it's not because i'm a bad person because i'm a millennial it's right. like hey here's this one specific set of circumstances that it, it's just not you know not yeah. the way that we operate here yeah this is what I would expect moving forward and I'm going to forgive you for that yeah. and we're going to get over that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Boom. Like now we, we just, we just edified and, and, and reinforced all four of our core values in that. Mm -hmm. I trust the fact that you're not going to do that anymore because I'm going to keep you here. Right. Uh, now if it was so horrible that you need to go, I'm going to, I'm not, then I can't get past trust. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was now like you've earned my respect because you're going to you're going to continue to earn my respect as you listen to the things that I'm requesting of you and, and, yeah. and, and improving behavior. You and I just had a one to one human conversation, and, and that greatly uh, helped unity. Yeah. It goes directly against one of our culture major culture issues in the ununified profession, also. Yeah. And then accountability, like we set the accountable measure of if you this continues to be a problem, I don't think you have a fit here. Yeah. Boom. Yep. And that's number four on our rules is the failure tolerance. Yes. You know, yep. is and that's the accountable part that yep. like that was probably the most important part of this whole thing, especially with Katie is like, yep. what happens when they screw up again? Right. 
do I just hold it over their head that this was continuing to be a problem? It's like, well, no, we, we take the isolated event and we set the, the standard moving mm -hmm. forward and understand what our solution would be so long as this problem continues. Yep. Um, because there are times where there people can't get past uh, and we'll get into that. Some of these barriers. The barriers, yeah. It's perfect segue into uh, barriers of forgiveness, yes. and barriers of the rules. Where if you have these next four things in your barriers, you're never actually going to be able to do this. Right. Um, so the first off, and it's not actually clear. Maybe, I'm, maybe it is, but it is that that lack of an ability to to hold people accountable. So if you're really, really uncomfortable with the idea of looking somebody in the eye and saying, "If it continues to be a problem, you're not going to work here anymore," right? Mm, you're just going to continue to have the same problems or whatever the the right. accountable measure might be. <laughs> yeah, that's if like this the continues final. to be a problem, you're going to be yeah. written up. If it continues to be a problem, you know, where you're going to have you know be on an unpaid yeah. suspension, Paid, or yeah. whatever. You know, yeah. there's plenty of options that are in there. You have to be willing to have that conversation. Yeah, I think I think some of the ones that we've used um, is retrain. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually, a part of, again, our administrative structures, we try to own absolutely as many problems as possible. And sometimes we default back to saying, um, I know you went through your introductory period. I know you went through basic training. You're still not getting it. Maybe we didn't actually do our job mm -hmm. in training you appropriately. Mm -hmm. We're going to kick you back through basic training to mm -hmm. then say, let's, let's now we at least know administratively we've given you ample opportunity and that can then be the solution. We just have to retrain you on this. Right. Um, and even now we've instituted a whole nother part, um, which I think we'll, we'll be touching on. Actually, I'm thinking it might be the next set of, uh, it'll probably be a couple. I actually think it'll probably be the next set of podcasts. Um, <laughs> now that I think about it, because I was like, "Oh, the next um, is the um, performance mentorship and onboarding." Yeah. Um, you yep. know those that whole part for us, we've actually expanded even further to be like, "Well, maybe we haven't had as much clarity." Yeah. Um, and I think that's where when we start to talk about. Um, you know, these types of solutions and saying, well, how do I hold people accountable? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how, what is the consequence of these things? It's like, you can always find a consequence for us. It's, we're just going to continue to like provide more and more and more and more and more tools for you to succeed. If mm -hmm. we continue to provide more tools for you and you're not succeeding, is it because we haven't done our job as the employer or you haven't done your job as the employee? Right. Um, and again, I think when we were talking about the after action review, that was one of the things that had come up is that as an employer, as a, a leadership team, as a management team goes through an after action review, you have to be open to the concept that you may not have actually been as clear from an administrator standpoint. And while this employee ends up having an actual problem or repeated problem, and it probably is your job to forgive the employee for, you know, having this, it's like, no, part of this is you have to be open to the fact that you probably didn't do yeah. that well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually that came up yesterday in the, the specific, uh, within like a specific process. Yeah. So, uh, the individual who missed the mark oh, yeah, had yeah, asked yeah. like, Hey, when, when this happened, when you change, uh, this procedures, procedure. can you let me know? And I was like, Number one, I'm sorry that I didn't let you know, because yeah. absolutely, when these things change, it's it is my responsibility, and I'm going to own the fact that I didn't do that. And moving forward, I'm going to communicate yeah. these as best as I can. Yeah. But also because I've changed a lot of things, and I don't really remember everything. Yeah. That I've changed in the last six months. Right. Because it's micro changes. You're right. Is. What uh, you know, we also need to go through everything that has you know that yeah. that does exist, and you need to identify the things that have changed. Yeah, and then if you have any issues or concerns about it, bring them up with yeah. me as well. Yeah, and and so so it was a two sided uh, uh, yeah. type. Uh, it, it, like there's the. I was accountable to it, and now here's the two-sided solution. Is I yeah. guess would be the best way to put yeah. that, yeah. Um, which is a little bit forbearance, at least in some capacity. But well, I accepted the whole thing. Okay, like I, okay. I, and that's the way that I tend to do this. Extreme ownership. It's extreme. Yeah. I just, yeah, no, yeah. I was me because I, yeah. I trust. And again, maybe more than I should. Yeah. I trust the fact that that individual, given the right solution, is going to implement it. Yeah. And I want to, I want to push that as far as I, yeah. as far as I can. Yeah. So. Uh, and that was the third type of forgiveness, by the way, that we kind of slid in. Yeah. The first one, exoneration. Uh, the second one being. Um, release. Release. Uh, so you you don't have the opportunity for forgiveness. You just let it go. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third one, of course, then being forbearance, where it's like both sides are like. I'm sorry, and 
you're sorry, but it's the same problem and no one really owns what that actual problem was. Yeah. It's we, we're going to co-own this one. Right. And it's like most of the time if someone is co-owning a problem, it's because you didn't actually root cause to what the real problem exactly. was. Exactly. It was like, oh, well, we, we lack the clarity to actually figure out whose fault this was, mm -hmm. you know, so neither one of us can, we're going to hold the post-it together and we're both going to forgive each other. It's like, yeah. eh. That just doesn't you didn't work. go far enough. Right. Um, but that's where then for us from an ownership standpoint, we're going to bring it back onto administration and say, well, maybe we didn't have the clarity to yeah. make this one post it five post its. Right. So that's then kind of that next that next piece on saying, no, when we start to talk about exoneration, we start to talk about forgiveness. It's extreme ownership of what this one problem is. Mm -hmm. um, again, not necessarily from an accountability standpoint, but again, from sort of the emotional part. Right. So when you have that mindset and you're able to isolate down to individual ownership, what, yeah. what tends to happen is the individuals that don't fit uh, shine brightly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In the wrong way. In the wrong yes. way. Like, it's like, ah, why are you here, right? right? right. Because it's it's barrier number one. Individuals yeah. serving different uh, yeah. goals, purposes, yeah. or initiatives. Yes. Uh, when we talk about release uh, and being the fact that we acknowledge the fact that you don't fit here and you're going to go this way and I'm going to go this way and neither of us are going to be mad about it. We yeah. just acknowledge that you now you serve a different purpose than I do. Yeah. Uh, we don't, there's no, there's no resentment to hold on to because yeah. you, you essentially solved the problem. Yeah. And I think that's where for me, when it comes to release, when I have like, if, if we do have an employee leave, like really both sides of release is like, you would assume that person is releasing, they're letting it go. I'm releasing, mm -hmm. but most of the time it's not, you know, yeah. usually you have where someone's continuing to victimize themselves. We're on the release side where it's like, bye, right. You know, like right. you're, you're not failing here because of failed administration. It's because there was one of these barriers and usually the first barrier to like, I'm going to leave. Cause you guys, it's like, well, actually we're probably serving different purposes and goals. And that's why we've spent so much time on core values to mm -hmm. say unity, I'm sorry, trust, respect, unity, and accountability. That's what we're serving. That's what we are here to do. And that's where you can see under the barriers of forgiveness and italics is that, you know, our sole responsibility at pause to serve the patient. It's mm -hmm. the same idea of check your shit at the door mm -hmm. is that if you are using core values and it's actually funny when one of our more recent employees left, she was using core values in a way to tell us how terrible of an employer we were yeah um so but as you start to read through what it is she was saying is that she was using core values as an exclusive reason to serve herself mm -hmm. and it was like oh there's the problem yeah this was a barrier because anytime we tried to have good conflict anytime we tried to hold you accountable to this mistake or teach you this in mm -hmm. you know a technique or teach you this it was still this idea in your head that it's like i have a loss of self-worth i'm only going to serve myself and i'm going to protect myself in this work environment i stand behind these core values to serve myself. Right. So that's the first one. If you have individuals identify, or I'm sorry, serving different goals and purposes and initiatives by. Right. And that's, that's just, a, it's just a, a hard impasse yeah. that it's, yeah. it's almost impossible yep. to actually obtain a useful level of forgiveness mm -hmm. for people that are here to serve different purposes, which again, like I, I love this industry as a whole yep. because the purpose is extremely tangible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. it's, it's not really a conceptual thing. It's like, it's furry and it walks in your door. Right. It's not that <laughs> hard to miss the mark on that. Uh, unless your corporate right. structure yeah. isn't actually, you know, if the geared corporate towards. structure is geared towards, you know, be profitable. Right. Like, yeah. That's... Yeah. Did you make your production this month and we're renewing your contract and you're 10% right. below where you should be. Right. You need to increase invoice while you're being accountable to the bill. Yeah. Right, which <laughs> serve the invoice that yeah. doesn't feel it doesn't, it feel doesn't seem nearly as yeah. as effective yeah. or or serve as, the profitability. Right, right. And, and there's a oh man, can you imagine how many people live that life oh, too? Yeah, I, I mean, that's so yep. much, and it's mm -hmm. not even just within our industry. Yeah. Just no, as, no, a, no. as a general rule, yeah. that's the serve the dollar bill. Yay, you capitalism. Know. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the funny part of as you bring that eminence, I'm just going to defend capitalism no, here I, that's for fine. a moment. That's fine. I, I'm not against capitalism. Is that to me, and this goes with the idea that you and I had talked about in like, in like arming the millennial. Yeah. And yeah. like when you give them an accountable structure and they run yeah. once they're provided a set yeah. to succeed run in, run with yeah. the structure to succeed in, is that to our, our structure of serve the patient uh, actually allows you know the free market yep. to reign because yeah. like we have a highly successful model yep. that is all serviced around serve the patient and then if you look at other uh, clinics uh, and, and, and we don't work there we can't say what ultimately their their goal is mm-hmm. but if it is serve the invoice right there it, that there's a ceiling on that yeah and that's top bonded practice yes. as a general rule right that's yes. kind of that's... serve the invoice yeah yeah uh, so we don't do that. No. And, and, and what, what it has shown is that in, uh, caregivers really appreciate that for their patients. Absolutely. And yeah, because you have tons of solutions then, yeah. you know, as if it's you're, you're not trying to make, you know, production. And I mean, that's part of the reason why we I typically try to pay almost all of our veterinarians above what they're ever actually going to be able to produce in our clinic, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, for that exact reason. Is it's yeah. like you kind of take money out of the equation to say, right. no, I'm not, I don't want you diving towards an invoice. It's more of toward, you know, dive to catch the patient. Patient, yeah, you know, one of our doctors brought up a really good point at our staff meeting too. He was like, you know, when what what happens when these people don't have money? Yeah, uh, you know, because because I I want to do all of these things, and and I I I don't I've never worked at another practice, but our solution was ask them what their budget is, right? And and that to me is something where it's like we're not actually diving towards an invoice; we're just understanding the yeah. the the yeah. scope. That we have available, yeah, uh, to yeah. to serve your patient as as uh, as mm-hmm. well as we can, and what that does is it says, uh, and we work with our caregivers as a, as a part of the team to right. make sure that we're all here to serve the same purpose. Yeah, yeah. If they got four hundred dollars, don't spend three hundred and eighty dollars in tests, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> they're gonna walk out of there with no solutions, right? You know, they might walk out of there with, oh, well, at least the blood work was normal, and it's like. And the x-rays were normal. Okay, but why is my animal coming and vomiting? I don't know, but you ran out of money. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going like, to give you one shot, which is going to last 24 hours. And then I guess we're just going to have to see what happens after that. Right. You know, so. And, and from a from a trust uh, perspective, that doesn't work because yeah. now that caregiver doesn't trust us at all. Yeah, at all. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. Anyway, I, I think barriers. we're segueing just a little bit, a lot of uh, it. A lot of bit. Uh, but again, coming back to the barriers of forgiveness, we said so. It's basically coming back to individuals serving different goals or purposes yeah. or initiatives. Ours is to serve the patient, not the invoice. Work with caregivers, figure out how you can sort of come together, at least in in, in part of that. But again, we're talking more on individuals serving goals and purposes from a barrier of forgiveness. Yeah. So if they're serving themselves in the workplace um there isn't going you're never going to be able to establish forgiveness with that person in the team right um and then the next part is then basically saying that there are personality differences and there is kind of a weak tolerance uh Mm -hmm. with certain individuals um and i think part of that comes from what we had said just a few moments ago and just saying these people that really hold on to stuff it was it was the new new employee i hate new employees i hate millennials you know it's like the new employee category where it's like now i have a very weak tolerance you know um you know, for this problem because I've had to deal with it 10 different times. Um, but you kind of create your own reality in that capacity is if you keep, keep holding on to this emotion, you know, it's, uh, you, you can actually force that behavior out of people to validate yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I struggle with that personally is, and it's funny cause it goes directly to what we talked about last week with uh, the, the conflict that oh, yeah. I've experienced with, uh, our, PR and events coordinator yep. is that uh, in my experience, I I like people who hold a corporate mindset. I just tend to create bad conflict with yeah. because I just want to break it. <laughs> it's horrible. Yes, yes, yeah. I really don't. I, I know yeah. that it's one of my biggest flaws yeah. here, and it's one of my biggest barriers to forgiveness. Yeah. Is that I don't actually see the individual. Yeah. I, I see the thought pattern. Yeah. I see the, the desire to create this yeah. massive structure. To, yeah. From my opinion, yeah. no reason. Right. And I don't actually see the individual in the fact that uh, there is good nature to it. It's just different. Yeah. 
Uh, the, it, so uh, yeah, that I I acknowledge that that's one of my biggest areas of, of which is uh, actually kind of number three barrier as well, which is the residual yeah. pain, mm-hmm. spite, and poor tolerance of habitual behavior, mm-hmm. and it's that it's the corporate mindset of habitual behavior yeah. uh, in in her uh, in the um, it was uh, government habitual behavior, yeah. um, but like you said, yeah, it's yeah your tolerance is very low for it, but it's it's in part related to yeah, and for both of these. Uh, it, 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 it's it's kind of a two way thing. So it's I it, there's the self reflection in understanding where your barrier is for yourself. Yeah, uh, would be number two. So yeah. that you can try to solve it. Yeah. There's also the I acknowledge that this barrier is too significant for me to overcome. Therefore, I don't want to subject somebody to the fact that I can't get over this, and I'm going to either work with somebody who do, I do not have this barrier with. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, you know, fix your problems. Yeah. I, I guess would be my first response, but also like acknowledge when you're not quite there yet, yeah. and don't ruin somebody else's day because of something that you're holding on to. If you yeah. really have that big of a problem with millennials, just don't hire them. Yeah. yeah. And then solve your problem. And then once yeah. you do figure out that they're actually individuals yeah. and you have, you know, just start to listen to them. Yeah. And I, I had a uh, conversation with a friend here recently who was kind of that, t- that same end. It was a little bit more geared towards burnout, yeah. you know, it was essentially like I, recognize that I probably am not going to be a great team member anymore, yeah. you know? And it's, I think that's where when you become very self-aware of what your barriers are, mm-hmm. you then make adjustments on what those barriers are. Cause if you're not, like you said, if you're not going to get over it, like, buy right you know and it's it does the buy doesn't have to be like catty and you know it can be a very professional goodbye but it's just mm-hmm. it's the like the the concept of the fire fast mm-hmm. you know it's like once you come these barriers of forgiveness once you come at one of these impasses mm-hmm. um you know the the number two barrier of forgiveness these personality differences we try to head off with our tricore assessment yeah. uh, which will be another p- uh, podcast on tricore um, but it basically comes down to exactly that is we're trying to minimize the personality differences um, not necessarily from an individuality standpoint, mm-hmm. uh, but it's more of like it's the personality tolerance yeah. um, of, of p- potential conflict. Um, and then that sort of residual pain and spite and poor tolerance is that with number two and number three, which is personality difference and then residual pain. Um, I think that actually is the reason why I found uh, why forgiveness almost never happens in our profession is, is those two things. We have too many mixed teams that don't have an understanding of individual personal differences. Mm -hmm. We don't embrace that difference between us. And then all we do is just hold on to shit all the time and we don't get rid of the emotion. Um, and those, because those two barriers exist at a very high level in our profession, you're never going to get to the point of forgiveness, which means the after action review and case report are going to be shit every single time you do it. And because you can't effectively work through problems, problems, your senior accountability officer, your office manager is going to get stressed the fuck out all the time. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, all you're having is a complete breakdown in both defining and assigning accountability. So now there's no core values in the workplace. It's just the bleed up. It's just, oh, everything crumbled because I have a personality difference. I have a low level of tolerance for these problems and I just hold on to a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's essentially what this is. You know, when you say that, it brings it just my my initial thought is the the a clinician that w- had taught you in school, right? Yeah, yeah. You hold yourself too cavalier yes. to be here. Yes. Right? High so, self-worth. <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> but there's also like was was that just because you know you were just an arrogant college kid sure. or was she holding on to something that absolutely. she never addressed absolutely and i'm guessing that it was number 2 it was like a ladder she for sure. saw somebody that held themselves in a similar way mm-hmm. and created problems that she never that, that were never solved even said that even said oh, that. Oh, really? Yes. Nice. Yes. It was, it was uh, uh, remarkably astute that you came upon that by yourself and saying, she's probably holding on to this. Yeah. That was actually part of it. She's like, yeah, we've had people like you through here before. Right. So it was like that exact yeah. thing. Like, oh, yeah. And people like you leave a bad taste in people's mouths. Mm-hmm. And that's then where I was just like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? but so you yeah. either, so that like, it goes one of two ways yeah. in that circumstance. It's yeah. either disparagement. Yeah, absolutely. So I know have to flatten my behavioral style and just yeah. be everything to all people which by the way is the most stressful thing oh, anyone yeah. can ever try to do yeah or yeah. Y- you kind of fight them 
yeah. <laughs> right? right or or yeah. you or you you try to edify your own self-worth which yeah. I, in, in my opinion edify your own damn self-worth yeah, and, absolutely you know try as hard as if you want or as hard as you can yeah. to work with that person but you know if they're if that's their major barriers personality differences and, res- and residual pain like there's sometimes you're just not going to get past that crap yeah yeah uh, and that was my buy that was, exactly. Yeah, it was like exactly. it, it was less on you know, and I think that's sort of the release. Mm-hmm. You know, is that if you have in in this circumstance, it's kind of the opposite of what we said. Like for us, we're coming from a very pure position of culture and core values. Mm-hmm. So when we have employees that are serving themselves or so on and so forth, it's like bye for me. And sort of that veterinary school example was the exact opposite. It's that I had a very high level of culture and core value for myself. Um, and it's not to say necessarily. Now I know this is going to kind of sound um, a little bit like. Um, hypocrisy, mm-hmm. you know, in, in saying that, well, I wasn't aligning with the core values of th- that particular circumstance. So I'm actually the outsider and I'm the one in the wrong. It's like, no, we're talking about an employer or an administrative structure who doesn't really have, co- who doesn't have core values. And the culture is really very toxic mm-hmm. because there isn't forgiveness. There aren't after actions. There aren't case reviews. There aren't a lot of these other things to actually institute this um, environment of uh, safety and vulnerability vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So if you are in where there is no safety, there is no vulnerability. No, that is actually the toxic work environment. Um, So for me, it was just the buy. Like, I am, I am actually mentally so far ahead of where you are at. It's sad. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's where two things come out of is, is number one, you have to create your own set of values in that environment. Right. So if those don't align with what exists, you're going to have an impasse and let likely leads to leads to that release. But the the second is uh, where ground floor administration came from. Exactly. So yes. yeah. uh, get get in get in the mud a little bit yep. and and start to put these things uh, yep. on on yourself. Yeah. Because that structure, like that person, basically said, "You're not my problem to solve. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you that you're not good enough. Yep. That you need to change a core part of yourself." Yeah to succeed in this environment, yeah. but I'm not going to tell you how to do it yeah, either. No. Oh yeah. No structure. No. It was just like, what? Or, like, or what? even a purpose. Why? Yeah. Besides the fact that I just don't like you. Yeah. yeah. That was actually, yeah. I mean, it was someone who knew me for like eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, okay. Yep, yeah. That's great. You know, at least for us, when we start to say that we have, we come at these impasses with employees, it's typically after three months, Yeah, three months of full-time employment, Yeah, you know, and it's like, we've had plenty of opportunity to work with you in this amount of time to say, Hey, here's culture, core values, you know, impact on the staff, mm-hmm. patient, serve the patient. So it's, yeah, an ample amount of time to determine where the problem is. And if it comes down to it, that the problem is us administratively, we have a broken process, then we need to be equally as accountable to mm-hmm. that, uh, mm-hmm. which we're not immune to. No. Um, and that's coming into the barriers of forgiveness. Number four is the failure for both sides to recognize intentions and results. Right. You know, is that is, again, I would say that one and four kind of go close with one another. Um, is that mm-hmm. one, a barrier of forgiveness. Number one is the individual serving different goals, purposes, or initiatives. This is then a failure of both sides to sort of recognize that. Yeah. Um, where if you guys are actually trying to do the same thing, mm-hmm. um, just make sure that you both understand well in the this one was kind of bred out of a specific scenario because uh and i think what tends to happen as a general uh rule in this and why it's a big barrier that we don't typically recognize is the fact that on on one side when we disregard results what that what typically is heard is well i didn't mean for that to happen sure like it wasn't my intention for that to happen so we're overly acknowledging intentions and disregarding results. Yes. Right. So the, we, we, uh, we're, we're, we're letting, you know, poor result be completely untouched. It's a sideline. Yeah. It's the result line. is a sideline, right. which in of itself, when you use an intention, this is my intention. This was my excuse. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly right. what For it is. For the result. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the other side is um, when you obtain a good result, yeah. but had poor intentions along the way. Yes. Um, that's the, uh, the, the, ultimately, that's the high producer that's a poor cultural fit. Yeah. That, you know, would be in my, uh, you know, experience is the person that gets, should get fired the fastest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because they just, uh, they might get there, 
However, they're they're gonna just leave a, just Trail tread shit, everywhere. Yeah. Um, well, and that was part of the after action review. If people remember back, is it's part of that process. Is like, right. what were the intentions and the results? And sometimes you have good intentions with bad results, and you know, yeah. sort of bad intentions with good results. Yeah. Um, is it you have to identify both parts because exactly like you just said, is that if you start to have people with bad intentions uh, with good results, it's kind of like you can't edify the results in that too much. There's probably going to be a um, good intention to good result pathway. Yeah. So you have to identify it because maybe there's a little bit of you know proof yeah. in the pudding. But yeah. you know, for the most part, yeah, you will typically trash culture at the expense of results. Yeah. I can do my job really well. I am the best at running this machine. I'm the best at doing full body. My performance is really high. Don't worry how I get there. Yeah, don't worry how I get there, right? <laughs> and just culturally fuck you. Right, right. <laughs> you know. So. so that's the when we before we had started recording, you were talking about the the new staff member, right? That's oh, yeah. maybe a little bit limited in a skill set, yeah. but culturally, culturally culturally a pretty good fit. So that's yeah. the uh, high intention, low result yes. type individual. Yes, yes. Like you can train a skill set. I yeah. guess is the way that we yeah. kind of look at that versus the the other way, which can be difficult. Where it's low intention, I really yeah. don't much care about how I get there, but I'm really good at obtaining the result. Yeah, that's that's more that's more. It's not impossible. Yeah. it's not impossible to train people how to do this stuff. We did it successfully with one of yes. our. <laughs> took We've a year done and it half. with more than one person, <laughs> but it, there it's was true. one large project. Yeah, huge project. Uh, it was, but. It, yeah. it, it, but it is difficult. It yeah. is. It's a. T it tends to be much more difficult yeah. because it's less tangible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we talk about this idea again. We go. We have our three uh, types of forgiveness, and we're yeah. going to focus heavily on exoneration because really, yeah. if you're requiring forbearance, again, uh, watch the video that we'll have linked in the yeah. description where it describes all three. If you're requiring kind of this mutual, like I'll forgive you if. Yeah, you forgive. You're me. not quite to the root of your problem. Yeah. We're you both holding the post. You don't have a yeah. full definition of what the issue is, and, no. and, and mute or uh, individual ownership is key yeah. to moving uh, over these problems. Yeah. So again, we're just going to burn through this real fast. Yeah, yeah, because we pretty much touched on it several times. Yes. The rules and barriers are the biggest part. The yeah. process is actually very, very easy. It is as soon as you accept the rules and you have none of the barriers. The process of forgiveness is easy. Yes. So I've root caused my problem down to the fact that I have this one piece yep. that I have failed expectations on. And yep. I say it out there and I, I accept full ownership for yep. the failed expectations in this specific scenario. I yep. apologize for them, which is step two. Yeah, so I, yeah, this is the process of forgiveness, the number steps. Yep. Yeah. So first one is, yep, accept full ownership. Number two, full apology. Three, I... As the I, offender. As the offender, the person that uh, failed expectations, I'm pledging to not do it again. Yep. This is the, I want to implement a solution. Yep. Not necessarily, here's the solution. Yes. We're right. not quite there yeah. yet. Yep. Uh, and just then, pledge to make a change. I've, I, I want to be better, and I am requesting number four, that you all will forgive me yep. for making this, uh, or for not meeting this expectation. Four is so awkward. Four is super <laughs> awkward. Because you have to actually request forgiveness. I am. Will you please forgive me yes. for this? Yeah, it's not, I'm sorry, because that's number two in mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. Offender offers an apology. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Number four, do you forgive me? Right. I, I, I commonly refer to it as the F word <laughs> yeah. for that reason yes. because it is super awkward. Yeah, it is. And you want it the other side of it, number five, yep. offender... Uh, or well, the actually, forgiver. Number, forgiver grants forgiveness. That's yep. the other super awkward yeah, side. That's the To look somebody sacrifice. in the eye and say, I forgive you. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't happen. No. No one, like, it's not a <laughs> no. part of our culture. And that's where I, you yeah. know, when we first started talking about this, it's like, we're go we're, you're on an uphill battle if when you're trying yeah. to implement this into your company. Yeah, you're getting over it. Yes. Because, oh man, it doesn't yeah. exist. It even, it even get, I think I've said about it multiple podcasts up to this point. Like, even just us going through four and five now as an example, like, I get super awkward. Yeah. Yeah, you it's know? weird just to <laughs> say, and, and that's why for myself, 
Like I've tried to make it just a part of my language. Yeah. And like I, yeah. I, I, for me to say the word forgive, yeah, is not. It doesn't have that like weird aura around yeah. it anymore. Yeah. So, and I, and I say it in front of our staff as much as yeah. I can, just to make again, just try to implement it into vocabulary because uh, it, it is so important to get to step five. When, yeah. And that's like that's the one that really empowers unity. Yeah. When I put it out there and say I forgive you for yeah. that, yeah. like you and I are now on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. We've gotten Breaks to hierarchy. that point as it relates dir- directly to this specific piece, and that's just yeah. it's one step. Uh, in a, in a positive direction. Number six, number six, uh, offender and forgivers identify a one sided change to prevent repeat failures. Really what this is, is you've owned this part of the problem. It is now on you to solve it or or to, to implement a solution. Yes, yes, yes. Now you and I can work together on determining the optimal solution on that, but ultimately you're the person that has to implement it. Yeah. Um, Number six is where the offender becomes the creator. Yes, essentially. Exactly. So both the coach and the challenger can, can help establish what the solution is. You don't have to come up with it on your own, nope. but it's basically then holding into that um, empowerment dynamic and just saying number six, the offender essentially is willing to sort of be um, focused on a desired outcome directed by intent, mm-hmm. you know, so. Yep. Exactly. And then the seventh uh, piece, and this is again where we uh, maintain our accountability, accountability. Mm-hmm. is what are the consequences if this specific solution is not implemented? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And number seven is how your persecutors become challengers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it goes from, you know, a, a persecutor sort of being blamed by the victim to now the challenger is focused on learning and growth. So it's saying, okay, what are the consequences of this continue to happen? The most basic example we use from the beginning of this podcast was when I miss a deadline, mm-hmm. what can we do to help you? complete this deadline or complete this project is it's like you know the consequences if you fail again someone else is gonna have to do it well that's the funny part about this is you you read that and if without the context of really understanding what this says yeah what that sounds like is what is the reprimand how are you now in trouble correct and and honestly what we've turned this into is okay we acknowledge the fact that you have a weakness in solving this problem right so it's if it's a personal thing like if this is something like you have a specific behavioral problem that you need to get past and you can't implement that solution like that's something i can't get past and you may not fit here right correct but most of the time it's yeah. like hey i had this thing you needed to do yeah. and you didn't get it done yeah what's the issue yeah like oh, yeah. i just don't know how to do it well do i need to just delegate this out to somebody yeah. else like i'm willing to forgive you for yeah. it we just need to figure out a solution i'm not yeah. going to hold this over your head and say you're a terrible person yeah. i just want to get it solved yeah. yeah and that was even with our example last week of the um the laughing in her face you know mm-hmm. it's like we only have the one side yeah you delivered the box wrong um you know she waited we didn't know that there was this other half to it but then once we got to the forgiveness part of that after action review you know that just her and i had essentially run Mm -hmm. um it was then like you know the it was like oh my god the part i played in this is i'm carrying all these other things from my government job my past employer and saying it oh my god i i never ever would have assumed that this was a part of the problem Mm -hmm. um and then it and then it was actually funny she said well I, you know, I, it looks like I still have some more healing that I have to do from that employer. It had yeah. tainted me in other ways. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, the, so, so that's a really good example, though, of the difference between forbearance and exoneration. Yes. So forbearance would say, I'll listen better if you stop being such a bee in yeah. the way you talk. <laughs> right. right? And, and I'm using, yes. you know, ex, ex, uh, exceptional terms there but right. uh the that would be forbearance yeah. it's the the if then yeah, if type then. forgiveness yeah. yep. and what we said was actually yeah I'm going to listen uh, better and yes. I'm going to implement yes. the things that you need from me better. Correct. Like I, that yeah. was my failed expectation there. Yeah. Yeah. And also through this process, we found another failed expectation that was, yes. was on your end and yes. you're now submitting a yes. one sided change Correct. to make it better. Yes. And that Both, they're two, two one sided totally changes. separate things. Yes. They're not, they're no. not coexisting. No. It's like, I need to get better here and you need to get better here. And we're both going to get better together. Yeah. Cause they were actually two completely, 
completely different post-it problems. Right. Yeah. On one hand, it was the carried stuff from past employer. You know, it was like, well, yeah, yeah. I didn't really listen that well. Right. You know, it's not just like, I didn't listen well, but, you know, we'll both do better. It's like, right. nope. You. That's why the after action review and the root cause method is so important is you'll have a board of 15 post-its. Who wants to start grabbing post-its right. off the board? And that's yours now. Right. Um, so. So it's a, it, that's that's why we talked about the tools first. Yeah. Is yep. Yep. this yep. is yep. kind of how you boil it down and yep. you can you can get into this very specific yep. it's seven steps. Yep. They're really awkward. Yep. The yep. first couple times yep. it's really tough to say. Yep. But, you get through but it. as soon yep. as you crack the seal yep. on using the word I words I forgive you or yep. will you please forgive me for yes. this? Yes. Oh man, yeah, it's it so well. much. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a sigh of relief, and yeah. that's that feeling again, kind of yeah. going back to where this whole thing started. Is we t- yeah. we took feeling and turned it into process to yeah. generate that feeling. Yeah, I want to be able to just whew, right, like right. We and can now do that in a, in a very like yeah, very uh, um, you know very systematic way exactly um and even then ending on uh, page eight there is just saying the keys of success is that the after action report is a part of that key Mm -hmm. is that you know again again we're at a point where we don't have to do as many after action reviews but when we have newer employees where we're kind of coming up with conflict it is a amazing tool to get back to forgiveness Mm -hmm. um and like like you said it is tools yes but it feels fantastic and i think even for her um in that very specific example even though we wrong her mm-hmm. she felt amazing coming out of it because it's like oh my god i never knew this was a variable right I, it, it's not it does in no way shape or form discounts our part in that process but nope. it's like i'm actually glad we sort of did laugh in her face in that capacity because it was <laughs> right. you know because right. it was able to identify a different thing that then was affecting trust with the leadership team it was mm-hmm. affecting things other ways mm-hmm. so i think that again sort of comes back when we start to talk about these rules and these barriers is that when we sort of hang on to barrier number three, which is that residual pain, spite, and poor tolerance for habitual behavior, Mm -hmm. is it bleeds over into so many different parts of your own individual performance. And when you start to get performance reviews and you start to get some of these other things, it's like, I don't understand why they're chapping me on this. I don't have a problem with it. They have a problem with it, you know? So you can even have where your job starts to suffer as a consequence, um, simply because you're holding on to emotions from months to years ago um, that may be ingrained in your person because you don't actually live on a foundation of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're bringing forward to the table is how to forgive. And from forgiveness, you can build up an entire organization on unity, trust, respect, and accountability. Exactly. So in terms of an initial implementation, you know, because we kind of warned a few episodes ago, like if you're going to dive into these tools and not have the set of core values on top and the forgiveness thing on the bottom, you're going to fall apart kind of multiple ways. Yes. Yes. So read this five times, read it in front ways and then back ways, read it all, mm -hmm. then just read the forgiveness model and then go back into the um, creating accountability, then go back into assigning back into defining. And it's like, Mm -hmm. as long as you go through it and you come back and you go through it and you come back, you're going to start to see how all those connections are made. And then every problem essentially fixes itself. It's going to take, it's going to take work. But once you get to that point where we've said multiple times, we have an accountable team, we have an accountable environment. It doesn't mean having an accountable environment doesn't mean we don't have conflict. We have conflict. Mm -hmm. We just have the tools to get through it. Exactly. So, uh, you know, thing to throw on your to-do list if you're listening to this this week is ask somebody for forgiveness. Yeah. That's step one, (laughs) right? It it just put it out there or say, hey, I'm willing to forgive you on that. Let's work on a solution. Yep. Uh, Just just use the word uh, and then really dive in uh, to, to the specific things. Uh, listed in in yeah. our our forgiveness model yeah. here, so I think this was a fantastic run through over several multi part series for culture and core values. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I mean that that's just me having a ton of self worth. It was amazing. We did a great job, um, but I do think that uh, coming on to the end of this, I think uh, to continue, but we're not actually stepping out of the core values bubble. We're just going to kind of jump into the mentorship side just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the future podcast it probably makes sense for us to go through the onboarding performance and mentorship 
leadership um, simply because now we're going to start to talk about in the future podcast the Tricore assessment onboarding performance reviews performance growth mm-hmm. um, how we institute that within employees and mentees because um, now we sort of have the basis of how to create core values and accountability well then the way that we kind of word it you know from onboarding and performance management is half of your job is culture yes. right so how <laughs> yes. so now it's like how do we start to train culture yes. and it starts day one at, yeah. at onboard i mean yeah. really it it starts for me in interviews yes. right i prep people yes for for yeah. the culture so we'll we'll dive more into that uh next week uh, I'm excited because onboarding is one of those things that I feel is pretty is missed oh, quite yeah. a bit uh, yeah. across the board. So I think yeah. I think that'll be a pretty good yeah. one. So <laughs> thanks for sticking around, guys. I hope that it was uh, enjoyable. Yeah, yes. We got a little bit long winded in the middle there, but yeah. definitely go out and use that F word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have a good week. <laughs>